Everyone, meet Mike. Mike, like us, is made of cells. To keep Mike healthy and alive, these cells divide in a process called mitosis. During mitosis, the cell replicates its DNA, and then itself, making two identical cells. But eventually, Mike's cells stop dividing. Mike will have to die. But why does Mike have to die? What's stopping Mike's cells from dividing forever? A scientist called Leonard Hayflick had the same question. In the 60s, Hayflick had been culturing normal human embryonic cells for cancer research. But no matter what Hayflick did, the cells, like Mike, would eventually stop growing. For context, it was part of the time that cells, if cultured properly, were essentially immortal in vitro. This was because of Alexis Carrel, a French biologist and Nobel Prize winner. He was famous, among many things, for allegedly culturing chick embryo cells continuously for over 34 years. However, nobody could replicate this, including Hayflick. After questioning his culture medium, glassware, and sanity, Hayflick decided to get to the bottom of this. In 1961, together with Paul Moorhead, Hayflick performed a series of experiments on human cells that attempted to question Carroll's famous experiment. Through these experiments, he noted that normal cells have three phases of growth. Cells start in phase one, the early growth phase. In phase two, the cells divide rapidly for two to ten months. After 40 to 50 divisions, the cells enter phase three. Cells undergo mitosis much less frequently and eventually stop dividing. In other words, senescing. This number would later be coined the Hayflick limit or the number of divisions a cell can undergo before it becomes senescent. Later, this number would be bumped up to 40 to 60. In a crucial experiment, Hayflick and Mohit mixed old male cells that had been cultured more than 40 times with young female cells that had only gone through about 10 divisions. As controls, they cultured the old and young cells separately. When the old control cells had stopped dividing, they stain the nuclei of the mixed culture to check for bar bodies, which are inactivated X chromosomes only seen in female cells. Since they only found cells with bar bodies in the mixed culture, that meant that only the young female cells were left. This was proof that the old cells remembered their age despite being surrounded by younger cells. Also, the cells weren't dying due to viruses or bad growth media, since those would have killed the younger cells as well. Further experiments showed that frozen cells, when thought, could somehow remember how many cell divisions they had undergone before becoming frozen. Something inside cells was counting their age by cell divisions, not the passage of time. Hayflick called this something the replicometer. But what was this replicometer? Well, after hearing of Hayflick's findings, Alexei Lovnikov proposed his theory of marginotomy now known as the N replication problem. Essentially, Olovnikov proposed that during synthesis of the lagging strand, DNA cannot be added when the last primer is removed, since it's right at the end. This would make the ends of chromosomes slightly shorter every time the cell divides, eventually damaging genes. But if this were true, cells would be damaged after just a few divisions, much less 50. So how were cells making it to the Hayflick limit? The answer came in the form of telomeres, nucleotide structures at the ends of chromosomes. These were first described by Barbara McClintock in the late 30s. Telomeres act as sacrificial buffers at chromosomal ends, protecting the genes from the relentless shortening. This was the evidence Olovnikov needed. The telomeres were acting as a replicometer, appearing shorter in older cells. So how do cells like cancer cells escape their fate and become immortal? It turns out that immortal cells express high levels of an enzyme called telomerase. Telomerase, discovered by Elizabeth Blackburn and Carol Grider, elongates existing telomeres, maintaining the cell's buffer against its eventual demise. This is how both stem cells and cancer cells can live unusually long lives. So, is that it? A teaspoon of telomerase a day keeps senescence away? Unfortunately, it's not that simple. The Hayflick limit is a way to safeguard from excessive cell division. Bypassing it via telomerase activation could lead to accumulated DNA damage and hence harmful mutations. We are working on it, but at the moment, 
immortality is still a ways away. Sorry, Mike. <laughs>